and welcome to a new series of game creation and we're looking at JRPG mechanics so we're looking at games like Final Fantasy and Pokemon and I could name quite a few others although those are my two favorite series in the genre um, and we're looking at like um, first of all moving around a map and going into towns and things like that as well as um, battles so random battles now with the random battles the biggest challenge is balance um, JRPGs will spend probably most of their time trying to get the balance right. Um, if you have um, items that are really underpowered, it can be really frustrating for the player. Um, I think there's a few games, is there um, one on the uh, Apple Arcade, the Fantasian or something, um, which was made by the Final Fantasy creator, which just has the balance completely wrong by the sounds of it, um, where just everything is just underpowered and um, the enemies are way too strong even if you grind they're way too strong still um, or you have mechanics that are overpowered um, which some of the Pokemon games I mean I think you can grind a little bit and suddenly have a super Pokemon that can just destroy everything and that can be quite frustrating for the players because you're not going to not use it but equally battles can be kind of a grind when you're just infinitely going to beat them anyway so getting the balance right is going to be key and it's going to involve an awful lot of numbers crunching and making sure that some uh, items are, or some weapons or whatever are beneficial to some battles and really not for others and so it's a bit more interesting to mix things up etc etc so there's so much stuff to go into i'm probably not going to focus on having this as a fortnight and then stop I might be um, doing this over several weeks or maybe even more or dip into it every so often. Uh, I started an RPG series uh, way back and they're actually my most popular videos um, but then I, I moved away or went away from this channel for a little bit um, and so I feel continuing those probably would be bizarre at this point uh, given the fact it's sort of three or four years later um, but I thought let's have a bit of a balance here let's start a kind of new a new uh, strand with this. Um, now we're not going to be using any other game assets um, and so this is going to be a brand new original game but please feel free to, to follow along with us. So the first thing that I want to sort of show is uh, Pokemon Yellow and this is on the analog pocket. The camera probably won't focus into it too well. Let's see whether I can force it to. There we are. And you can see here that when you walk, so when I click walk it kind of does that thing where it has to be on one of the tiles and that's probably how we're going to do our game and you can see with Pokemon is you don't get any battles and it's probably going to muck up the... there we are um, you don't do any battles unless you go into long grass which is actually um, quite a good mechanic to have because one of the things I get frustrated at with Final Fantasy which I adore the series but just trying to explore, but fearing the fact you're gonna run into someone. Now, on this uh, recent ports of, uh, say, Final Fantasy VII, you can actually switch off that uh, mechanic so that you can just walk freely, which I've got mixed feelings about as well, because why would you ever want to go into random battles if you had the choice not to? Uh, so and you end up with very underpowered characters so it's a whole thing jrpgs love to hate them hate to love them whatever okay let's get started though enough rambling from me uh we've got a completely blank um frame we're on frame one um if you don't know uh which i'm going to start all series like off like this this is a program called click team fusion developer 2.5 plus um basically you can get a trial of click team fusion 2.5 um the uh click team people recently released recently if you in the last few years released a plus version which just had a few more features um i've paid for the developer version in fact i've paid for it twice because there was a steam sale and i got it on steam as well and the developer just gives you a lot more features the the software itself is so so cheap i actually wish they charged more for it um so that we can get more features quicker um, but anyway, that's that's a story for another day. So we're going to start off just by creating a player icon. And I know some people with their tutorials just have those kind of diamonds. I'd rather like try our best to come up with something a bit more 
sort of visually appealing well okay let's not go too far but uh oh actually i'm gonna fill the circle i'd rather come up with something that looks a little bit like a character so i don't know <laughs> i may have spoken too soon with this actually to be fair uh, and we'll have some black shoes why not there we are now he doesn't have any arms at the moment so let's get some arms on him oh, we'll have them facing the there we are how simple is that right uh, now with all characters I, I normally want that action point to be the bottom middle um, and the reason you want it at the bottom is it will really help if there's a tree or something to determine which one um, goes in front etc uh, and there's quite a few few reasons for that um, something I haven't decided at the moment which I kind of need to is how big everything's going to be um, so what's the grid size going to be so something like Pokemon will ha have quite a big well on the on the um, Game Boy screen quite a big tiles um, right in proportion to the frame size um, so um, you probably want them uh, as a um, like as a multiple of two not as a multiple as a multiplier of two whatever as a as an indice of two um, so that's why you pick 16 32 or 64 uh, let's go for 64 so actually I'm gonna do this I'm gonna cancel that I'm gonna do this inside the frame editor itself and I'm just gonna make this 64 proportional stretch resample so 64 64 apply and there we go there's my character so I'm gonna have quite big tiles with this okay so we're gonna start him and we've got to do maths constantly with this because I've put it at the bottom middle um, so it'd be 32 and then sort of the X would be no the X would be 32 would it I can't even remember now um so yeah ah uh, that's why okay cuz i've it's you now got to reset it cuz you've resized him you've got to reset the hotspot so and now i might as well just do the action point for now right there we go that makes more sense so the y would be 64 and so you're starting at the top left um tile um now we kind of want um there to be sort of tiles here as well um, and so we're gonna have one for tiles and we're just gonna make it 64 by 64 and let's have some grass or something and so let's just and all of this is just quick and quick and easy let's use the brush tool and do some grass I do have a graphics tablet, although I don't know, well, I do know why I've got it, but I'm not very good at drawing. In fact, I'm really, really bad at drawing. And most of you probably out there are pretty bad at drawing, and that's okay. Because if you get something, if you really think that you've got a game that, that people would enjoy, you can hire someone to come and draw the assets for you. Now, do I want these to be... Um, actives or background objects well I probably want to load this from an Excel spreadsheet from a CSV file down the line um, and it's quite difficult to work with anything other than actives when you're loading things in so I probably do want this to be um, uh, uh, an active I tend to now just have everything as actives let's call this the player Player object. I should probably put it as a capital because it's an object. But anyway, okay. So we're gonna have maybe a couple of variations on this. Maybe, perhaps, uh, or is that no? That's too complicated. So let's start by putting the background in. So we've got to figure out what our frame size is going to be. I'm actually don't mind keeping it as it is. Let's just see if that's too small. No, I'm quite happy with that for now. Um, so what I would do is have a look at what the frame size is so 640 by 480 um, and so 
does. Hang on, I've got to check whether it divides. Uh, actually, it doesn't really matter if it divides, but anyway. Uh, so 640 would divide by 64, and 480 would divide by 64. Uh, oh, it'd be 7.5. It doesn't really matter too much. Uh, so it's 10 by 8, isn't it? So let's go into, whoops, click the wrong one, as I always do. It's this one here. And we're going to start by creating all the grass tiles for the background. And this is just going to be by a loop. So fast loop. So start loop. And we're going to do um, the uh, tiles on the, uh, I don't think it matters, tiles on the x-axis. And what we're going to do here is just say, what well, what's the width? of the frame, or yeah, of the frame. And I'm going to divide that by the width of the tile. So position width. And I'm going to round that up. And so to round something up, you do seal, which I probably spelt wrong. Oh, I actually spelt it right. So what this is going to do, uh, the frame width was it uh, 640, right? 640 divided by 64, which is 10, and so that would just be nice and easy, 10. So let's go do it 10 times. Then on that loop, I can't remember, is it tile x? I believe, tile x, tiles x. Yeah. And we're gonna do the same thing, but this time we're gonna call it tiles y. Instead of the frame width, we're going to do height. Instead of the width of the grass, we're going to do its height of the grass. Okay, which is the same as the width because it's 64 by 64. So this time it will be 640, uh, sorry, 480, which is the frame height, divided by the height of the grass, which is 64. Now that is going to give you 7.5. So we need seven and a half of these tiles. Well, you can't do 7.5 number of loops. Number of loops has to be an integer. It has to be a whole number, right? So we, if we did 7, it wouldn't cover enough, right? So we're going to say seal. We want it to round up always. So instead of 7.5, it will be 8. And so there will be like half a tile underneath um, that we can't see. Um, we are actually planning on doing scrolling and stuff, clearly, because we're not going to fit an RPG just on one screen. Um, so that won't be a problem. Right. Um, now we're going to create the, uh, there used to be an egg. They've changed that now. So create object at, we're going to create the tile object. The X coordinate will be the tiles X. Capital T should be a lowercase. Um, so that will start to zero. We're going to times it by the width of the um, tile, that should be fine. And the Y coordinate is the Y and times the height of the grass. And this just gives us options down the road to change things, although it can be quite irritating maybe um, to keep typing these in. Now, something we didn't do is the action spot, so we just got to make sure that's top left. I always, for background tiles, always put it at the top left I find it way easier to figure out where they are. And when you're doing these kind of loops, it means that the top left will be zero, zero. And so it's just nicer for loops. Something else we've got to do is make sure that always uh, the person's at the front. So order brings front. Right, let's look it up. Wicked. Now you can see that it didn't do enough there, which is really odd. I'm not quite sure why it didn't do enough there. Um, Let's have it tiles wide, ceiling, frame height. Okay, so this is where we can do a bit of debugging. Get a counter. Put that there. And let's just output what that is. Oh. There's no control Z on that for some reason. Okay, so copy that. Let's just see what that gives us. So set counter to that. Hmm, so it gives us seven. Just, uh, I think I know why. 
Okay, so this is welcome to the complexities of ClickTeam. ClickTeam will it always assume something's an integer and will always give integer answers unless you explicitly tell it otherwise. So here it's doing the uh, 480 divided by 64. Okay, it's doing that, but then it's instantly rounding it down for you because it, it doesn't want to hold decimals because that's really inefficient for it. You need to explicitly say, no, I want you to work with decimals. So what you can do here is just times any of them by 1.0. As soon as there's a decimal in there, it will work with decimals. Hopefully that will now work, and it does. And we can get rid of that counter, or we can just always have that counter move to the front. So order, bring to front. So we've got a little, nice little counter there. Cool. Right. Where are we with the time? Okay. It's probably about time that we sort of finish for now. Um, so we've got a nice little background. We've talked about what the project's going to be. Um, and we've got some sort of person. <laughs> I think uh, I think what's going to have to happen is I'm going to have to spend a bit of time without the camera um on and uh, design a better character but it's really really important that you do that way down the line start with really basic horrible looking sprites and get the mechanics done because it could be that you've gone completely the wrong direction and you may have wasted all this time creating characters that you no longer need because the mechanics aren't fun and you might need to go in a completely different direction a lot of this is called a uh, minimum viable product is you release a game that is absolutely at its bare bones or you create a game at its bare bones and then you keep iterating the things that need to be done to make it better and better and better. Um, anyway, that's going to be uh, it for now and I'll look forward to seeing you in tomorrow's video. Thank you very much.